It's a Halloween noon. <laughs> yeah, all right. So first oh. up, uh, don't forget to watch the Box 16 with JP. It is probably, um, well, I know because everyone said it, it's our best unboxing yet. So check it out. Um, I won't ruin the surprises for you if you haven't already seen it. Next up, uh, we are shipping safe. We're shipping smart. And we're shipping around the clock at Adafruit. Thank you so much for supporting us over the last eight months. We are able to get all the things that everyone needs, and our team has remained safe the entire time. Um, let's uh, show off. Uh, we're getting back to the future. Back. It's, so welcome back, Arduino. It's 2005 again, and we're carrying Arduino. Um, we've been carrying Arduino for a very long time. And uh, we chatted with Arduino recently, and we're like, hey, can we get some more Arduinos to stock? Because people like them. And we put them in the store, and there's even, like, a cool new design. See the bottom? It changed a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so these are official Arduino from Arduino. If you want to support Arduino, yes. buy some Arduinos from us. Yes. The Uno, most popular development board, a revolutionary open source hardware board. Um, we've got mm. the Uno. We've got the Mega. Yeah. Um, so the, what's cool is that they come with a, a nice protector. Yeah. I used to include bumpers with every order, but I don't have to anymore yeah. because it comes with this really nice plastic injection molded piece. Let's right, uh, so look at the Mega. Yeah, so we got the Mega, um, lots of pins. Uh, at Mega 2560, it's still an ABR. It's still running at 5 megahertz, uh, uh, five volts. If you need something that's a 5 volt mic controller, but you need more pins than you know, the Mega is an excellent choice. Okay, we also have... This is actually a new product. The other two were like renewed. Yeah, renewed. Well, it's it's like Halloween. Renewed They're products, like zombies. Yeah. But this one is totally fresh. This is the Maker uh, 1010. And this has a uh, Sam D21 on it, which is one of our favorite processors. And it has a Wi Fi U Blocks chip. Um, and the U Blocks chip that's mm -hmm. on it is actually has an ESP32 inside of it. We just talked about the ESP32. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, so the ESP32 inside of here is what provides Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi support. So you get, whoa, so close. Yeah. You get both uh, USB and Wi-Fi. Hold on. Oh, I turned yellow. Um, it's got battery input. You can use our LiPo batteries. It's got battery charging. Uh, it's got RGB LED. And you can use it in Arduino um, and connect over uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth low energy. And it also works great with Arduino Cloud. It's one of the few supported boards that it's like you plug and play and you can um, use Arduino's like very simple cloud interface to uh, send data to the internet, store it there, create dashboards and control things. There's also this little port. Uh, it's a five pin JST SH connector. It's not a Stemma QT port, but we have a cable that can go from this port to Stemma QT. So if you'd like to use our Stemma QT boards, we have a couple we're gonna show on this new product segment as well. Um, then uh, you can plug and play with that. Uh, there's also a reset button, a little power supply uh, action there, a little uh, buck converter, um, a really Great little Wi-Fi board um, compatible with the MKR series. It comes fully assembled with um, the, these through-hole uh, stacking headers. So you can stack on maker shields. And I think down here is also a debug port too. So this is a, uh, a great little Wi-Fi board. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you want something that's breadboard compatible, friendly, battery powered, uh, compared to like the Mega and the Uno, which are not Wi-Fi capable and not battery powerable. This is what you want for portable projects. All right, and then we also IoT have projects. one of the starter packs. Yes, also uh, carrying, again, we have the starter kit and it's updated. There's like a, now a plastic piece, it's not laser cut, um, more parts, more projects. Um, there's a big online community. There's a lot of educational uh, outreach happening with Arduino. So you get a classic Arduino Uno and all the parts you need and tons of projects to like basically learn how to make uh, robotics, sensors, displays and like an alarm clock like a little like robot rotating thing uh yeah. cool stuff people love this pack it's one of the most popular ways to learn electronics. all right so welcome back arduino and for all the folks who have asked because there's a couple things like the uno and the mega and other boards that they wanted um probably have some more of them in soon next up wires wires these are um replacement cables 
for uh, RGB matrices. Uh, all of RGB matrices, RGB matrices come with cables, but I guess some people are like, I lost mine or I broke it, or I need um, I need another like cable to like make a large matrix display or something. So now we have the cable. You know, it works with basically any RGB uh, hub 75 matrix. It's plug and play. It's a couple bucks. So if you broke your cable or you lost it, uh, now you don't have to get a whole new matrix. Just okay. buy a cable. This is a Dune Highliner at Fold Space. Yeah. Yes. It, it does not. These are just little. These things. are little tubes. Actually, show me next to the quarter because it's quite small. This okay. actually goes with our um, Paris, not Paris something, sorry. Our uh, pneumatic pumps and vacuums. If you want to make vacuum slash pump projects, like air projects that inflate and deflate. Um, we had like a T connector, but some folks were like, hey, I just want an extender connector. So you have three millimeter tubing that plugs onto each end and you can extend it or you can adapt it to something else. Uh, so it comes in a pack of five and it works with our uh, pneumatic system. So okay. a, late, a late addition. Next up. A updated product. Uh, we've carried this LPS, I think this is the LPS 33 for a bit. It's a waterproof uh, barometric pressure and temperature sensor. So you could actually use it underwater. Um, the board itself is not waterproof, but so it's an evaluation board for the sensor. But if you want to use a sensor, um, then this eval board will get you started. And uh, you can see the old version here, just trying to demo of when you press on it, the pressure goes up, of course. Um, but what we've changed is we now have it STEM IQT friendly. Uh, we're trying to do that to all of our sensor boards. We're even going back and, and doing old ones like this one to uh, get it up to speed so you can use our plug and play STEM IQT, STEM IQT system um, to add sensors very easily, as long as they're I squared C, like this one. Okay, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our community, our customers, and our staff is? This tricolor feather wing, it's a 2.9 inch ink display. People love these tricolor displays. We've got vivid red. Uh, dark black and then kind of a pale papery white color. Uh, this feather wing works with any feather. It has built-in SRAM, so you don't have to worry about using all your RAM to buffer the display. You can use the, the onboard RAM to do so. It's got three control buttons at the top. There's a little bit of space, SD card, uh, and of course a 2.9 inch tricolor disp display with 296 by 128 pixels. Um, and uh, I can show on the overhead cool demo. Yeah. We, um, you know, we yeah. had in the store already this grayscale version. So you can see here, this is the, the Think Ink uh, Feather Wing with uh, a, a four color grayscale display. So you've got black, light gray, dark gray. Why is this not locking? Lock. Uh, white, light gray, dark gray, and uh, black. But you know, using only four shades, you can actually create like pretty cool dis um, images to display. So this is just uh, showing off you know, your tarot cards you're working on. Uh, this is uh, the tricolor is the new version, so it's exactly the same board, but we just changed up the display. So this version doesn't have grayscale. Instead, you just get three colors. You get white, black, or red, and you can use the red as highlight. Or in this case, if you're usually a person with pink hair and you're holding a uh, puppet that's pink. Uh, you can use it in a dithered mode um, by processing your images with image magic. We have a guide on how to do that. And you can actually get like, you know, pretty cool uh, color effects. It can, it can mimic most, you know, if you have an image that's mostly reddish colors, uh, you'll be able to have an image that looks, you know, from far away, photorealistic, uh, even though you only have a, a 128 by 296 pixels. Um, the one downside, oh, let me uh, plug this in. The one downside for, um, sorry, one second, for having tricolor is compared to grayscale, it takes a lot longer for it to update. So you see, it's got to do this like flashing back and forth thing and it clears the display. And it takes, you know, up to 16 seconds um, to display an image. So here, I just press one of the on, uh, onboard buttons to show new image. Whereas with the grayscale and monochrome ink displays, they'll update in um, you know a second or two basically when you're dealing with when you're dealing with um, tricolor displays, they'll take like 10 to 16 seconds. Let's see, there you go. So you see, it just has to go back and forth. The red pixels, because they're such large pigments, they take a while to come in. 
So it's just something to watch out for, especially if you want to have quick updates. You're not going to get quick updates with Tricolor. Not possible. For that, you'll need uh, yeah. the grayscale display. You see a lot of these in the uh, e-tags that are in store displays because those, you know, they only change the price once in a while. They have a few different colors um, on it. And if, like, you know, no one's around usually when it's even changing. So right application for the right screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And with that, is new products. Thank you. Ooh.